Now, legacy standards support using 20 megahertz, 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz, or even 160 megahertz for signaling. That's very useful if I have lots and lots of data to transfer. For example, if I'm downloading a movie or uploading a huge file, that's very effective. But in real life, we often run into scenarios where a small amount of data needs to be transferred. For example, if I'm doing a Wi-Fi calling, only a small amount of data needs to be transferred. Or if I have an IoT sensor, then only a very little amount of data needs to be transferred. Using these large bandwidths for these kind of applications is like using a fire hose to water a household plants. A lot of water gets wasted. A better thing to do is to break these large bandwidth, break this big pipe into lots of smaller pipes and assign it to different users depending on how much traffic they have. This allows us to use the medium more efficiently. This particular feature is called OFDMA and this is being supported for the first time in Wi-Fi through the 11AX standard. High density deployments are becoming more common nowadays. These are scenarios where a large number of devices are connecting to access points within a small space. Examples of this include auditoriums, stadiums, and event centers. To meet the capacity requirements in these scenarios, we often need to deploy access points that are closely spaced from each other. This causes the coverage area to overlap. A side effect of this is communication in one of the access points need to be deferred until communication in a faraway access point completes. This is because of only 1% talks at a time rule of the legacy Wi-Fi standard. This is not truly required. Let me explain this through an analogy. I'm talking to you in this room. At the same time, somebody else is talking in the next room. I know that you are interested in listening to me. You don't care about what exactly is happening in the next room. And I also know that I'm talking loud enough that the interference coming from the second room is not going to impact your understanding of what I'm saying. So in this scenario, we can let two people talk, assuming that the level of interference is low enough. So the same analogy applies to Wi-Fi as well. If a far away link is not going to bother me, why differ? Let's just stomp and then let's talk on top of each other. Why? 11 ax standard accomplishes this through a feature called BSS coloring. I defer my communication only if somebody else in this room starts talking. Similarly, an access point will defer its communication if the signal is coming from a base station of a same color. If it is coming from another access point that's of a different color, I'm not going to stop my communication because it's coming from a faraway room. Outdoor deployments are also becoming more and more common nowadays. But the interesting thing is the original Wi-Fi spec, the legacy standards were all developed with indoor deployments in mind. These standards are not really optimized for outdoor deployments. There's a big difference between indoor channels and outdoor Wi-Fi channels or wireless channels. The multipath delay is much longer in a outdoor environment compared to indoor environment. All the legacy standards were designed with shorter multipath delays in mind. 11AX is the first standard to address the longer multipath delay requirements. There is a feature called long OFDM symbol that's supported in 11AX. This particular feature optimizes Wi-Fi performance for outdoor deployments. 